1 Kings 8 Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the leaders of the fathers' households of the sons of Israel, to King Solomon in Jerusalem, to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh from the city of David, which is in Zion. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves to King Solomon at the feast, in the month of Ethanim, which is the seventh month. Then all the elders of Israel came, and the priests carried the ark. And they brought up the ark of Yahweh in the tent of meeting, and all the holy utensils which were in the tent. And the priests and the Levites brought them up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel, who congregated to him, being with him before the ark, were sacrificing so many sheep and oxen that they could not be counted or numbered. Then the priests brought the ark of the covenant of Yahweh to its place, into the inner sanctuary of the house, to the holy of holies, under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim made a covering over the ark and its poles from above. But the poles were so long that the ends of the poles could be seen from the holy place before the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen outside, and they are there to this day. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets of stone which Moses laid there at Horeb, where Yahweh cut a covenant with the sons of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. Now it happened that when the priests came out of the holy place, the cloud filled the house of Yahweh, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of Yahweh filled the house of Yahweh. Then Solomon said, Yahweh has said that he would dwell in the cloud of dense gloom. I have surely built you a lofty house, a place for your dwelling forever. Then the king turned his face around and blessed all the assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel was standing. And he said, Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to my father David and has fulfilled it by his hand, saying, Since the day that I brought my people Israel from Egypt, I did not choose a city out of all the tribes of Israel in which to build a house that my name might be there, but I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. And it was in the heart of my father David to build a house for the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel. But Yahweh said to my father David, Because it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well that it was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build the house, but your son who will come forth from your loins he shall build the house for my name. And Yahweh has established his word which he spoke, and I have been established in place of my father David, and sit on the throne of Israel, as Yahweh promised, and have built the house for the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel. And there I have set a place for the ark, in which is the covenant of Yahweh, which he cut with our fathers when he brought them from the land of Egypt. Then Solomon stood before the altar of Yahweh, before all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands towards heaven. And he said, O Yahweh, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or upon earth beneath, keeping covenant and loving kindness to your slaves who walk before you with all their heart, who have kept with your servant, my father David, that which you have promised him. Indeed, you have promised with your mouth, and have fulfilled it by your hand, as it is this day. So now, O Yahweh, the God of Israel, keep with your servant David my father that which you have promised him, saying, You shall not have a man cut off from before me who is to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your sons keep their way to walk as you have walked before me. So now, O God of Israel, let your word truly endure which you have spoken to your servant, my father David. But will God truly dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house which I have built. Yet have regard to the prayer of your slave and to his supplication, O Yahweh my God, to listen to the cry and to the prayer which your slave prays before you today, that your eyes may be open toward this house night and day, toward the place of which you have said, My name shall be there to listen to the prayer which your slave shall pray toward this place. And listen to the supplication of your slave and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Listen in heaven your dwelling place. Listen and forgive. If a man sins against his neighbor and is made to take an oath, and he comes and takes an oath before your altar in this house, then listen in heaven and act and judge your slaves condemning the wicked by bringing his way on his own head, and justifying the righteous by bringing him reward according to his righteousness. 
When your people Israel are defeated before an enemy, because they have sinned against you, if they turn to you again and confess your name and pray and make supplication to you in this house, then listen in heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land which you gave to their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against you, and they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin when you afflict them, then listen in heaven and forgive the sin of your slaves and of your people Israel. Indeed, teach them the good way in which they should walk, and give rain on your land which you have given to your people for an inheritance. If there is famine in the land, if there is pestilence, if there is scorching wind or mildew, locust or grasshopper, if their enemy besieges them in the land of their cities, whatever plague, whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer or supplication is made by any man or by all your people Israel, each of whom knows the affliction of his own heart and spreads his hands toward this house, then listen in heaven your dwelling place, and forgive and act and give to each according to all his ways, whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men, that they may fear you all the days that they live upon the face of the land which you have given to our fathers. Also concerning the foreigner who is not of your people Israel, if he comes from a far country for your namesake, for they will hear of your great name and your strong hand and of your outstretched arm, so if he comes and prays toward this house, listen in heaven your dwelling place, and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, in order that all the peoples of the earth may know your name to fear you, as do your people Israel, and to know that your name is called upon this house which I have built. When your people go out to battle against their enemy, by whatever way you shall send them, and they pray to Yahweh toward the city which you have chosen, in the house which I have built for your name, then listen in heaven to their prayer and their supplication, and do justice. When they sin against you, for there is no man who does not sin, and you are angry with them and give them over to an enemy, so that they take them away captive to the land of the enemy, far off or near. And if they cause these things to return to their heart in the land where they have been taken captive, and return and make supplication to you in the land of those who have taken them captive, saying, we have sinned and have committed iniquity, we have acted wickedly. And if they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who have taken them captive, and pray to you toward their land which you have given to their fathers, the city which you have chosen, and the house which I have built for your name, then listen in heaven your dwelling place to their prayer and their supplication, and do justice for them and forgive your people who have sinned against you and all their transgressions which they have transgressed against you, and give them over as objects of compassion before those who have taken them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they are your people and your inheritance which you have brought forth from Egypt, from the midst of the iron furnace, that your eyes may be opened to the supplication of your slave and to the supplication of your people Israel, to listen to them whenever they call to you, for you have separated them from all the peoples of the earth as your inheritance, as you spoke by the hand of Moses your servant, when you brought our fathers forth from Egypt, O Lord Yahweh. Now it happened that when Solomon had finished praying this entire prayer and supplication to Yahweh, he arose from before the altar of Yahweh, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread toward heaven. And he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice, saying, Blessed be Yahweh! who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. Not one promise has failed of all his good promises, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. May Yahweh our God be with us, as he was with our fathers. May he not forsake us or abandon us, that he may incline our hearts to himself, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And may these words of mine, with which I have made supplication before Yahweh, be near to Yahweh our God day and night, that he may do justice for his slave and justice for his people Israel, as each day requires, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that Yahweh is God, there is no one else. Let your heart, therefore, be wholly devoted to Yahweh our God, to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments, as at this day. Now the king and all Israel with him were offering sacrifices before Yahweh. 
And Solomon offered for the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered to Yahweh, 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the sons of Israel dedicated the house of Yahweh. On the same day, the king set apart as holy the middle of the court that was before the house of Yahweh, because there he offered the burnt offering, and the grain offering, and the fat of the peace offerings. For the bronze altar that was before Yahweh was too small to hold the burnt offering, and the grain offering, and the fat of the peace offerings. So Solomon celebrated the feast at that time, and all Israel with him, a great assembly from Lebo Hamath to the brook of Egypt before Yahweh our God, for seven days and seven more days, even fourteen days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king. Then they went to their tents with gladness and goodness of heart, because of all the goodness that Yahweh had shown to David his servant and to Israel his people. Ephesians 5 Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, just as Christ also loved us and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. But sexual immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints, nor filthiness and foolish talk, or coarse jesting which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know with certainty, that no one sexually immoral or impure or greedy, who is an idolater, has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of that light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. And do not participate in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead even expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore, look carefully how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. On account of this, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God, even the Father, and being subject to one another in the fear of Christ. Wives, be subject to your own husbands, as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her, so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. So husbands ought also to love their own wives as their own bodies, he who loves his own wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ also does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is great, but I am speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Nevertheless, each individual among you also is to love his own wife even as himself, and the wife must see to it that she respects her husband. Ezekiel 38 And the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus says Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out, 
and all your military force, horses and horsemen, all of them magnificently dressed, a great assembly with large shield and shield, all of them wielding swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Put with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer with all its troops, Beth Torgamah from the remote parts of the north with all its troops, many peoples with you. Be prepared and prepare yourself, you and all your assembly that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the last years you will come into the land that is restored from the sword, whose inhabitants have been gathered from many peoples to the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. But its people were brought out from the peoples, and they are living securely, all of them. And you will go up. You will come like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Thus says Lord Yahweh, It will be in that day that thoughts will come into your heart, and you will devise an evil plan, and you will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages. I will go against those who dwell quietly, that live securely, all of them living without walls and having no bars or gates, to capture spoil and to seize plunder, to turn your hand against the waste places which are now inhabited, and against the people who are gathered from the nations, who have acquired cattle and property, who live at the center of the world. Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all its young lions, will say to you, Have you come to capture spoil? Have you assembled your assembly to seize plunder, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to capture great spoil? Therefore prophesy, son of man, and say to Gog, Thus says Lord Yahweh, On that day when my people Israel are living securely, will you not know it? You will come from your place out of the remote parts of the north, you and numerous peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great assembly and a numerous military force. And you will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the last days that I will bring you against my land, so that the nations may know me when I prove myself holy through you before their eyes, O Gog. Thus says Lord Yahweh, Are you the one of whom I spoke in former days by the hand of my slaves, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days for many years that I would bring you against them? And it will be in that day, when Gog comes against the land of Israel, declares Lord Yahweh, that my wrath will mount up in my anger. In my zeal and in my blazing fury, I have spoken that on that day there will surely be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. In the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the beasts of the field, all the creeping things that creep on the ground, and all the men who are on the face of the earth will quake at my presence. The mountains also will be pulled down, the steep pathways will fall, and every wall will fall to the earth. And I will call for a sword against him on all my mountains, declares Lord Yahweh. Every man's sword will be against his brother. With pestilence and with blood I will enter into judgment with him, and I will reign on him and on his troops, and on the numerous peoples who are with him, a torrential rain, with hailstones, fire, and brimstone. And I will magnify myself, I will manifest myself as holy, and I will make myself known in the sight of many nations, and they will know that I am Yahweh. Psalm 89, a mascal of Ethan the Ezraite. I will sing of the loving kindness of Yahweh forever. From generation to generation I will make known your faithfulness with my mouth. For I have said, Loving kindness will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. I have cut a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your seed forever and build up your throne from generation to generation. Selah. The heavens will praise your wonders, O Yahweh, your faithfulness also in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the sky is comparable to Yahweh? Who among the sons of the mighty is like Yahweh? a God greatly dreaded in the council of the holy ones, and fearsome above all those who are around him. O Yahweh, God of hosts, who is like you, O mighty Yah? Your faithfulness also surrounds you. You rule the swelling of the sea. When its waves arise, you still them. 
You yourself crushed Rahab like one who is slain. You scattered your enemies with your strong arm. The heavens are yours. The earth also is yours. The world and its fullness, you have founded them. The north and the south, you have created them. Tabor and Hermon sing with joy at your name. You have a mighty arm. Your hand is strong. Your right hand is exalted. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Loving kindness and truth go before you. How blessed are the people who know the loud shout of joy. O Yahweh, they walk in the light of your face. In your name they rejoice all the day, and by your righteousness they are exalted. For you are the beauty of their strength, and by your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to Yahweh, and our King to the Holy One of Israel. Formerly you spoke in vision to your Holy Ones, and said, I have bestowed help to a mighty one. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil I have anointed him. With whom my hand will be established, my arm also will strengthen him. The enemy will not deceive him, nor the son of unrighteousness afflict him. But I shall crush his adversaries before him and strike those who hate him. My faithfulness and my loving kindness will be with him, and in my name his horn will be exalted. I shall also set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He will call to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I also shall make him my firstborn the highest of the kings of the earth. My loving kindness I will keep for him forever, and my covenant shall be confirmed to him. So I will set up his seed to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his sons forsake my law and do not walk in my judgments, if they profane my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with striking. But I will not break off my loving kindness from him, nor deal falsely in my faithfulness. My covenant I will not profane, nor will I alter what comes forth from my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever like the moon, and the witness in the sky is faithful. Selah. But you have cast off and rejected. You have been full of wrath against your anointed. You have spurned the covenant of your slave. You have profaned his crown to the ground. You have broken down all his walls. You have beset his strongholds with ruin. All who pass along the way plunder him. He has become a reproach to his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his adversaries. You have made all his enemies be glad. You also turn back the edge of his sword and have not made him arise in battle. You have made his splendor to cease and cast his throne to the ground. You have shortened the days of his youth. You have wrapped him up with shame. Selah. How long, O Yahweh, will you hide yourself forever? Will your wrath burn like fire? Remember what my span of life is. For what vanity have you created all the sons of men? What man can live and not see death? Can he provide his soul escape from the power of Sheol? Selah. Where are your former loving kindnesses, O Lord, which you swore to David in your faithfulness? Remember, O Lord, the reproach of your slaves, how I bear in my bosom the reproach of all the many peoples, with which your enemies have reproached, O Yahweh, with which they have reproached the footsteps of your anointed. Blessed be Yahweh forever. Amen and Amen.